Hi there. Welcome to the Slifka and Slifka bio poster at BOSC 2021. Slifka is a lightweight, unopinionated framework for executables as web services. And Slifka bio is Slifka applied to bioinformatics. It's been developed by Mateusz Vorovny, ably assisted by Stuart McGowan, Jeff Barton and myself, Jim Proctor. We're all based in the Barton Group at the University of Dundee in Scotland. Slifka Bio is Jalview's new web services stack. Jalview users can access a range of third-party bioinformatics tools via the UI. And uh, we've been developing a series of web service frameworks over the years to make this happen. The basic idea with Slifka Bio is that there's an HTTP REST API that allows Jalvi to discover the available services to validate input and then to submit jobs for execution, monitor and retrieve the results. And the aims for Slivka Bio are that it should be scalable. We've got 2000 plus users launching Jalview every day. It should be easy to configure, add new services and also easy to install locally for Jalview Power users. This is all under the auspices of the Dundee Resource for Sequence Analysis and Structure Prediction, which is an Alexia UK resource funded by the Biotechnology and Biological Sciences Research Council of the UKRI. And Slifka Bio will eventually replace the Jabbers system, which currently provides services for Jalview. So I'm now going to hand over to the author of the system himself, Mateusz. Who's going to explain how you can create a Slivka service from scratch. And I forgot to mention that the tool he'll be wrapping is a fantastic program called Bob the Builder, which allows you to create ASCART renderings of villages. Now let's turn this program into a web service using Slivka. First, we need to initialize a new project. Let's call it demo. And it created a project with them, which we can see the image. We create new service by adding a service yellow file into the services directory. Let's start with an empty file and explain each part as we populate it. At the top of the file, we can specify some metadata, such as version, name of the service description, cell phone, current version, license, and the list of classifiers. The classifiers can help software identify the, the topics and categories that the service falls into. The service metadata is followed by the command that we run. Next, we define the list of arguments that our program can take. Each argument in this collection has access template in which the actual value will be substituted for the placeholder. As you can see, if you're dealing with multiple values for the parameter, you can specify the character used to join the parameter. Or if the parameter is a file, you can make it create a symlink to this file. The arguments not meant to be modifiable by the user can be given default values here. Next, we must map the command line arguments as input parameters to our web service. For each argument that we want to be modifiable, we create a parameter in the parameters section. Here we have multiple ways to customize the parameters. For example, we can specify the type for each parameter, give it some name, description, set the default value, tell the user whether it's required or not, or we can provide constraints for choices or integer or float values. We can also add any environment variables required by the program. Finally, we list the output files that our program produces. In addition to any file the program makes, we can capture standard out and standard error streams. Last, you can specify the list of runners that will execute your program on the system. If you have an advanced workload managers installed, this is where you link them. Okay, thanks Matej. So I'll just finish up by telling you the state of play for Slivka as of July 2021. So we recently launched the public 
server and Slivka's homepage, which you can find at the URL shown. And this provides you a status page for Slivka Bioservices, and you can also run some of the services, or all the services, via a very simple web interface. Uh, there's also links to GitHub and copious documentation. You can install Slivka via its Anaconda channel, which provides the packages and also an environment for installing Slivka Bio. You can also install the Slivka client Python library, and this provides a very basic command line interface. And also in development is the Slivka, Slivka client library in, for Java, and this is already integrated into Java's next major release, which is Java 2.12. And uh, if you get in contact with us, we can certainly show you how to try that out in Java and Java JS. Okay, that's all, folks. Find out more at Slivka's homepage, and you can also get in contact with me and the rest of the the Java team over at discourse.jalview.org. See ya.